and the curse for this town are all in my mouth Only I don't know how They got out oh dear Turn me back into the past I was when we met I was happier then With no mindset And if you turn to me like a girl takes to the wind Well, I'd have jumped from my trees And I'd have danced like the king of the ice Or the rest of our lives would have fared well What's going on? How's everyone doing? Good morning. Welcome to the morning show. A little bit late today. I keep wrestling Periscope. I don't know why Periscope won't work. It's pissing me off. But uh, we got YouTube and Facebook. The internet was wrestling me too, so we got a new router, so hopefully we can fix the internet soon. Thank you to everyone for hanging out. Scott, missed you yesterday on the pre-recorded show. My bad. Good morning to you, Scott. Josh, don't forget the intro. Osborne, I forgot the intro on the pre-recorded show yesterday. Welcome to the morning show. It's bite-sized bits of everything that I enjoy. A little music to start. Some American towns, some American baseball players. They could not be American baseball players, just baseball players. Books, music, this hat. Where's the, where's the correct hat? Uh-oh. I don't know where the other one is. Oh, it looks like it's in the laundry basket on the floor across me. Anyway, morning to Jax, drop the mic, Norm, Kyle, Scott, Troy, Real D, Vinny, not Mr. Moon. Over on Facebook, we got Todd Father, we got Travis, Enrique. How's everyone doing? Hey, BBD, is my other hat in that box, the other Taurus hat? All right. There we go. Now I'm dressed appropriately for the show. How's everyone doing? Thanks for allowing me to pre-record yesterday. You have no idea how much that changed my sleep schedule, my mood, and my mind. So I think that uh, we, you guys might be getting one pre-recorded show a week, especially if we have to work really late at night. But even if we don't, I was able to go grocery shopping with Caitlin, sleep in. It was nice. So I think uh, if you guys don't mind, expect one pre-recorded show a week so I can uh, catch up on sleep during this crazy, crazy 10-day stretch of sports. Yesterday, we, we recorded three half-hour shows and three hour-long shows. So, what's that? Four and a half hours. Four and a half hours of uh, on-mic time while at the office, not including breakdowns and meetings. And today's the same. So, it's been crazy. And then Thursday is a day game. So, that throws everything out of whack. So, it's uh, it's been a crazy... Crazy grind. We knew what we were signing up for. We're very excited with the results and you guys tuning in and everything. So we're happy. But yeah, it's been nuts. Um, today on the John Boy Media Network, we got Wake and Jake after this talking about all the sports. He's got NBA stuff to talk about, baseball stuff, keeping Jake busy, talking baseball. We did Trevor's tidbits. We talked all about the Fernando Tatis things. We talked all about. Um, Clevenger and Plesak, some bubble talk at the end. I forget. It was good to get Trev's opinion on all that as a player, and he's talking about what he was taught. Mansplain baseball elsewhere. The uh, the Braves gals. Let's see what their episode is titled today. I didn't get a chance to tune in at all yet. Breaking balls. The girls add Emily Nyman. Is that you say? I like Emily. She's always active. To the show, they talk about the Yankees and the Braves. COVID stuff and all that. So check out man's playing baseball elsewhere. Talking giants. They keep ripping through the daily episodes, preparing everyone for giants baseball. Talking yanks is the voicemail episode and John Boy and Jake radio is coming up at 10 o'clock. That'll be fun. What happened to Fernando? Uh, he hit a home run and then they got mad at him. 
So that's what that's uh, what happened to Fernando. Anyway, let's move on. We had the shins opened up. That song takes me to like a place in my brain from when it first came out. Kind of weird. Uh, and the town of today. All right, so this town had nothing to offer. McAllisterville sounds like in um, in Mister Deeds when he makes up the Winchesterton Townville. Uh, we got McAllisterville, Pennsylvania. It's 68 degrees, partly cloudy. Fantastic weather. I'm happy for him. I'm happy for the people of McAllister. Did I tell you that I'm coming to you live from the Roosevelt Studios here in the Bronx? Don't think I did. I'm wearing a Roosevelt shirt. Got a little dressed up, a little spiffy for you. Um, and then one of our shirts underneath. How about that? Let's see. We got uh, Doc Brown. Back to the Future shirt. McAllisterville, PA. I, I couldn't find anything. Their Wikipedia sucks. There's like zero info on this town. There's zero history. If you go to the Wikipedia for it, it just says the demographics and all that. There's uh, there's no information. I tried to find some other websites to find some information on this place. No one, no one cares about McAllisterville. It's in Pennsylvania. I'll show you where it is. It's in Pennsylvania. Kind of like uh, close to dead center. If you zoom in, we got uh, it's this tiny town east of Oakland Mills, East Juanita High School, Juanita Mennonite School, Mennonite School. So, yeah, it's this tiny, t- tiny town. There's not much going on. The so- look at, Oh, look how tiny it is. That's kind of cool. How many houses could be in this town? It's like, uh, these towns are so small that we find sometimes. McAllisterville, McAllisterville, PA. They got a restaurant called the Bread of Life. You think that's any good? They got a salon. They got some churches, obviously. And here's a nice little neighborhood, some cul-de-sacs. Love a good cul-de-sac. Anyway, yeah, zero info. The Wikipedia has zero info on McAllisterville, PA. But if you go to the YouTube and type it in, what you get is cave diving. And I didn't watch all of this yesterday. I figured we'd watch it together. It seems pretty spooky. I'm going to speed it up to one and a half speed. McAllister Cave, 2017. That's the entrance, like just a random ass hole. I don't know if you saw the entrance at the beginning, but... It's just a a hole. It's like you walk up, there's a tube, like a sewer stream with a door. So we're going down the cave. And I skimmed through this yesterday. I couldn't find a part that seemed cool. I read in the comments that they happen upon a, a body of water, which is like the well in which some of the town gets their water. The concept of that is pretty cool. I don't understand. Like, if you're, if you're taking me down a cave, it better lead to somewhere awesome to do what these guys are doing. They call themselves grottos, spurlunking. What's cave diving term? Uh, they are crawling through like these tiny crevices. Right? You need to have a treasure. You need to have a, a secret hideout, swimming hole. Haunted house, old, like, crazy historical burial. You need to lead to something because this is crazy to me if you're just going. So there's a nice wide open area they found. Is that water or is that dust in the air? This has to be so choppy for you guys. It doesn't really play smooth, and I have it on fast forward, so it's choppy for me. I'll, uh, I'll go back to normal speed and see if that's any better. Why would you do this? I get it. You get a sense of adventure and explore. It just seems like. In one of the descriptions of this video, it said, I didn't go because I didn't think I could fit. It's like, man, if that's the criteria for not going, you would have never went anywhere. I like how they set up these cameras. Like they throw the camera before him and then he pulls himself through. 
I guess I guess it is cool to be where no one else is, you know. That's always cool when you're like driving at 4 a.m. and you're the only one on the highway in the busy, busy area. You're like, man, it's just me. I'm awake before the world. Maybe that's the feeling that they get here. Explorers. But you gotta you gotta lead somewhere if, if it's me. Um, they said they're gonna lead to a body of water, so well, we need to get to that. I had a truffle shuffle shirt for years. Great conversation piece, says Scott TP. Um, nice. Spelunking is for scientific research. Caving is the recreation. Okay, good to know. Thank you, BVD. Spelunking is scientific only. This is just called caving. I think they call themselves grottos. Is that the correct word? Uh, who who knew that? BVD. A member of the Pennsylvania's Pennsylvania's York Grotto. So that guy failed to get through. We made our way through most of the main branches in the cave, and then I rigged and attempted to repel the double drop into the wind chamber. Now, the wording seems pretty cool. So they're going into a wind chamber. Underwater lakes does look cool. I agree with whoever said that in the chat. But where's the water? Now they're return crawling? Stalagmites, stalactites. I know my shit. Ugh. Want to know what we're watching? <laughs> in the McAllister Cave? McAllisterville Cave. They just, they didn't find anything cool. Just a grotto? Yeah. Is that a snake? Is that just a rope? That's a snake. That's a snake? Why is a snake living in the cave? And then they just come out the same hole? I don't know why the snake is in the cave. I mean, it's kind of weird to... to How about Cavely with 136 subscribers? Yeah, I mean, their cave if you're action. in on caves, it's weird that these holes... Like, if you're walking in the woods and you see this box... Yeah, I get, I get the. the Ooh, ad, how I, young would you have had to been to go in the hall? I wonder if they lock them, and it's like a realtor lock, and you right. need to be part of a caving society they to have the lock. Because otherwise, yeah, that's a classic story of kids getting lost in the cave. I think the like Steve, 13, 14 year old Jim probably gets in there, but that might be it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing that. There, I'm not doing. I was never into that stuff. And uh, did you ever have a mm, Middlebury? Never really had this. Snake was planted in the comments. Got me. There's some there's some towns that have the sewage drain like this underneath a small bridge, and kids in high school like crawl through. Sometimes your young kids crawl through underneath the roadway. Do you ever have that in a town? Not where I'm from. Yeah, Middlebury didn't have that. We had that in in uh, Illinois and Australia where I lived, but I never liked it. I never liked crawling in tiny tubes. So see you waps later. Gross. Um. So that's caving. Did anyone see the body of water they talked about? Because someone in the comments was like, that water is where I get my well from. Come on, that can't be a fun time. I get it. I also don't get it at all. Caving people. That is a cave gate. It is to prevent people from getting in. B B B V D with the cave knowledge. Okay. I like the cave gate. B V D, what's your favorite cave? How okay, B V D, how locked is that cave gate? Cause I got I feel like people could get in there if they wanted to get in. Anyway. That's McAllister. There's really nothing else that it had to offer. It's kind of boring. If you're from McCall, no, it's not even McAllister. It's McAllisterville. If you're from McAllisterville and you got something else going on in town, let me know. Sounds like you got a cool cave. We're moving on. McAllisterville, PA. They got caves. They got nothing else. That's all I have to say about that. 
The random baseball player of the day is Greg Nettles. How about that? Yankee great third baseman Greg Nettles, whiz with the glove. Didn't get a lot of attention because Brooks Robinson existed. Uh, intern producer Luke probably didn't know that this is uh, a big a big fish in the Yankee world when he threw this name onto the sheet. So whenever there's a huge, big player like this, there's a lot to talk about. I'm just going to talk about Game 3 of the 1978 World Series because that's it was his coming out party to the world, which Nettles didn't really enjoy, but everyone else is giving him a lot of credit. Uh, I'll sh- we have like the clips, but Gidry was pitching Game 3. Uh, young Gidry against the Dodgers, and I think the Dodgers are up 2-0. I'm not positive. And Nettles recorded five assists in the game, but they were all spectacular plays. Um, Reggie Smith, Dodgers player who hit a bunch of balls Nettles' way, said, I had to go with something else. I picked on a man who was dependable. It's Dodgers 2, Nettles 1. If we hadn't been losing, I may have applauded myself. So he's getting praise from all over. Dodgers third base coach, Preston Gomez, he's got the best view of a third baseman in his place. I said to Nettles, you're the best. I told him that today is one is one game that you should get the credit for. You kept that young pitcher in the ball game. You're the best. What amazes me is that he makes the stab. He gets up, wheels around, and then he takes his time before he throws. He always knows exactly what to do with the ball, what base to throw to. It was quite an exhibition. I say he's as good as Brooks Robinson. He goes to his left. He goes to his right. He comes in on the ball. Nettles, when asked about this, said, I've been making plays like this ever since I was in Cleveland. You don't get the recognition if it's not in the World Series, but I'm not an overnight success. So he was kind of like, "Uh, guys, been doing this for years. You just don't notice me. Because you just give gold gloves to Brooks Robinson day in, day out. Probably deserved him. He's pretty good. So, let's, uh, we got footage of that game and all the plays he made. I think there's audio here. Greg Nettles helped win it with some great plays oh. against the Dodgers. Oh. But Greg Nettles helped win it with some great plays against the Dodgers. Play number one, diving to his right. Line drive, catches it. Play number two. Diving to his right, gets up, fires it to first. That's a nice play. All right, young Gidry, play number three. That looked like a funky hop, and he went straight. So I guess that's what they're saying. Like, he knows exactly what to do with the ball. Because on this play, I wonder what the – looks like there's two outs, and there's a runner on first and third, two outs is what it seems like. And it's kind of like a funny hop that he stays with over his head, steps up and just goes to second for the last out of the inning. Goes the short way. That's a really nice play. Oh, here's the replay. Didn't really pop up as much as it looked in the other one. Just kind of ate him up, but he stayed with it and went to second. That's cool. Um, Here's another one. The bases are full. Oh, the bases were full. Oh, that's an unfortunate look, my man. Oh, my God. Did you guys see this guy? Brutal outfit that they got this guy wearing. Looks like the Michelin man. His boxers and underwear are riding up on him, so he's stretching him down. That's a tough break. Look at this guy. Come on, dude. You gotta you gotta say no to this outfit if you're this dude. I think you gotta know yourself a little better. The all white. What is going on here? What he has done in the last two days, it's unbelievable. It's tough. It's a tough look. Tough look for that guy. Uh I say that kindly, but it wasn't it wasn't really kind at all. Oh, 
So this is game four of the 1978 World Series. And I'm guessing this is their announcing, they're announcing Nettles to the stadium. Is probably going to get a nice applause because he was the man of the hour in game three. Let's hear it. Batting second, the left fielder, number six, Roy White. My dad's favorite player, Roy White. Where's Greg? Thurman Munson, thick. Man, looking like Austin Riley with those legs. Munson's got a little, like, Pete Alonzo in him, huh? Just kind of that, like, dopey big dude. Physically looking. Reggie Jackson. Show me Nettles, show me Nettles. Sweet Lou. All right, here's Nettles. A little more gusto on that applause for Nettles in Game Four. Got his wife in the play in the P the PIP. Oh yeah, long applause, standing ovation. Ain't sports beautiful, man? I love I love smart sports fans respectful like that is a really cool moment for Nettles he's probably a little embarrassed by it but the fans to lay it on extra thick after his game three kind of look like Phil Hughes there that's cool I always like that stuff good job by the PA and everyone to let that linger too I mean, when do you see a third baseman dominate in that way, I guess? Like where where, where he's the like he's the guy. I think it's kind of rare. I mean, he only made 5 plays, but I guess they're all game changers. Let's go to uh Greg Nettles spelled weird. Let's go to his baseball reference page because I believe I believe he only got two gold gloves or something like that um, you can see it on the side here okay so he got all-star MVP gold glove in 77 and 78. Led the league in home runs in 76 with 32. How about that? Dude could pick it. Twins to Cleveland to Yankees to Padres to Atlanta to Montreal. Played until he was 43 years old. From 67 to 87. I didn't know that either. That's a lot of playing from Nettles. That's cool. Anyway. And that's all I have to say about that. The book of the day, and I'm running late because we fought with Periscope for 10 minutes. The book of the day is also a Yankee book. Full Count, Education of a Pitcher by David Cohn, Jack Curry. Awesome book. Uh, really, really insightful. Really cool if you like the Yankees. No, really cool if you like pitching, if you like the mindset of a pitcher. And the little tiny things that happen that help a pitcher out. Um, I, I have some little tidbits here that I'm – I'm going to share, and we interviewed Jack Curry on Talking Yanks about this book because he wrote it with Coney. He did a great job. Um, uh, where's this? There's some cool stuff. Like there was this uh, glove they had in the bullpen. They called it the Ego because it would just pop really loud and it would make you feel like you were throwing the ball really hard in bullpens before games. Coney talks a lot about the headspace. Like, he likes sabermetrics. He likes analytics. He likes all that stuff, but he also likes the headspace and the confidence and the things that cannot be quantified. He's a, he's a great guy to find the balance there. And this book uh, 
has some cool tidbits about it. And there's some baseball slang I'd never heard. Um, talks about how the footing on the bullpen mound is different from game to game, which is typically comprised of a firmer clay and is better maintained by the ground screw. But a pitcher has to share that mound with the opposition, meaning he must be adaptable. If the other pitcher has a size 14 cleat and you have a size 11 cleat and he has dug out a larger hole in front of the rubber for his landing leg, you have two choices. Repeatedly fill in with more earth or adjust and create a different landing spot. It can be irritating, but the pitcher must make adjustments. I put a note here. If we ever interview Coney, say, uh, who was a pitcher that you were sharing the mound with that you would be like, God damn it, this dude's going to tear up the mound. Had to be a guy. Pitchers have to have opposing pitchers they don't want to share the mound with. Like, who tears it up the most? I think that's a fun question to ask pitchers. Um, and then this other tidbit from this book I liked. Rick Sutcliffe once asked Joe Girardi to use a new catcher's mitt because Girardi's broken-in mitt no longer popped noisily when Sutcliffe's fastball hit it. One of the Yankees' bullpen catchers had a mitt we called the Ego, the Ego Glove, because the sound that erupted when the ball clashed with the mitt made, a, made every pitcher feel like Nolan Ryan. So it talks about, like, visu, visualization, visualization, what the, visualization, Guess I'm not going to say that word today. Pitchers need, um, you know, how you want your catcher to talk to you in the bullpen versus on the mound, game day, all that stuff. There's a lot of cool tidbits. Mr. P is a nickname for players who need everything to be perfect. They call them, oh, he's a Mr. P. One thing goes wrong, it's all going to crumble. In one stretch of games, I had the following pitch counts, 134. 136, 142, 134, 166, 132, 115, and 140. In those eight starts, I averaged 137 pitches per game. For some perspective, the durable Max Scherzer of the Washington Nationals led the majors in 2018 with an average of 106 pitches per start. His season high was 121, and Coney's average was 137. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right, anyway. You guys think Randy Johnson was terrible to share the mound with? Randy Johnson's stride may have been so long that a normal person's stride landed before it and it didn't get affected at all. I wonder if you didn't want to share a mound with a dude who is like the same exact height or leg stride as you, but a different shoe size, or he just like made a, a, a different hole. Anyway, um, that was uh, that's a really interesting book. Tons of tiny tidbits like that. Go check it out if you want. I think it comes out on paperback soon, which is awesome because I hate hardcover. But when these Yankee writers write these books, I want to read them right away, so i got to buy it in hard co- hardcover, and i got to read it. Um, all right. Cool. I think that's the show, guys. I ran late. I pushed Jake back. Probably pushed everything back. My bad. Periscope won't work. Thanks for everyone coming to YouTube and Facebook for watching. I will see you to Morrow. Gold teeth and a curse for this town. You're all in my mouth. Only I don't know how they got out of dear to to the past I was when we met I was happier then with no